Hello, my name is Beth. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am outside. It's a beautiful day. It's, um, I think, supposed to be in the low 70s today, but by Saturday, it's supposed to get up to 102. <laughs> a big project that I did about three months ago was um, challenging myself to practice Navajo every day for a whole month. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't go into it um, planning a whole lot. I didn't know what to expect or how I would, how fast I would be able to pick up on everything. I didn't know how long I was going to do it or even if I was going to be able to vlog the whole thing, but I did. If you're new, you can check out the videos of where I recorded my journey in trying to practice Navajo every day. But as I mentioned, that was about three months ago, so I wanted to give an update on my Navajo language challenge and how I'm progressing and what I'm changing or doing or not going to do in the future. For those of you that don't know, I'm full Navajo. I was born and raised on the Navajo Reservation here in northern Arizona. Both my parents were fluent in Navajo. I'm the youngest of five and my older brothers are fluent in Navajo. My, me and my sisters, not so much. My husband is also Navajo, so it's been a challenge for both of us to try to pick up and learn and be able to speak more Navajo in a conversation. We do have one little son, um, he's almost two. Right now he's in this little verbal spurt. Um, he's picking up so much words, he, he's quickly building his vocabulary. He loves playing with cars, with little toys. He loves playing outside in the grass in our backyard where I'm at currently. He loves being back here. So we've been spending a lot of time out here before it gets too hot. <laughs> but back to my challenge, I challenged myself because all my life I've been wanting to speak more Navajo. I've wanted to be fluent and be able to carry a conversation in Navajo. It's something I've said I've always wanted to do. So obviously my story and experience of trying to learn Navajo is different from everybody else. Our family dynamic is different. Our resources and connection with other fluent speakers might be more or less than other people trying to learn Navajo. And just our day-to-day -day schedule in life is so different. Um, a stay-at-home mom, so my days are very busy with um, taking care of my son, doing activities with him, trying to teach him to read, doing different activities inside, outside, playing, going to the playground, all the usual cooking, cleaning. It's just a lot um, and of course it's hard to stay on a consistent schedule for anything. It's always up in the air. No two days are the same even though I try to keep a schedule or a routine it, it just bounces all over from week to week so up front that was one of the biggest challenges in trying to learn Navajo consistently every day whether that was reading writing speaking or just picking up practicing vocabulary that I had written down or even watching videos on YouTube or other online resources and it kind of was unorganized I wish I had spent more time at the beginning to really write out a plan and gather all of the resources that I did had or that I did like. Try to see where what parts of the week I could focus maybe five minutes here and then another day I could fo focus more or longer for 30 minutes for 40 minutes and really build on the days that I was able to talk with my dad or my brother who they're fluent in Navajo and I was able to practice with them. Um, I kind of just swinged it during the whole month. It was really fun to dive in and find out what resources are trending, especially for classroom uses. Because um, one thing I tried to do was, one, learn it myself and learn more vocabulary. And two, I was also te teaching my son at the same time. So I was teaching him colors in Nav English and Navajo, animals, basic commands. I was trying to use them use it as a practice opportunity as well, where I was speaking, learning and speaking and practicing with him at the same time, which is probably not the best idea. But having no consistent schedule made it hard for obvious reasons. With something like learning a new language, anything really, learning to exercise or a new program or a new hobby, um, you have to have a consistent schedule to be able to practice, repeat it and to learn. But just with our schedule and our circumstances, it just was hard. <laughs> And I also wish I had taken the time to research more about teaching a child, a toddler, two languages. That became overwhelming because a lot of the resources and pages and videos that I found, the parent or at least one of the parents was already fluent in the language. So one parent would speak English with Spanish, for example. One person would speak only English with the child and then the other person would only speak Spanish with the child. Um, and of course in our household we can't do that. 
um, learning as we're going and he's trying to teach him along with myself and my husband too. Um, and it was just hard. A lot to juggle day to day on top of everything else. And after doing it for maybe two weeks, I felt like I was doing it wrong um, just because I, I knew there was probably a better, more structured way to one, learn the language as an adult, and then two, to teach two languages to my toddler who's just in that prime age, that prime window of picking up languages and words and speech and sounds. Throughout that time, I was seeking other parents who were doing the same thing, not, not necessarily with Navajo, but who were um, trying to teach their family or their children a second language other than English, for example, Spanish, Italian. And the hard part for me was that they made learning languages look so easy, especially with popular world languages because they have so many resources to choose from. There's online tutoring programs, there's a large number of online courses, videos, chat programs um, that they can choose from. They could go online and find hundreds and hundreds of books, workbooks, activities, um, the little activity binders, flashcards, just everything have at their disposal. And if, if you're familiar with native languages or even Navajo, you know that finding those resources are few and far in between. There's not a lot of resources, especially updated resources available. And that became kind of discouraging, but it inspired me at the same time, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. I did cover some of these language programs that are available in my last video for a review of the online language web resources, such as Busu, iTalkI, um, just amazing language learning platforms that are available now that I, I never knew until I started researching more about language learning. I listened to some um, bilingual podcasts from bilingual teachers and parents. I follow some people on Instagram who post a lot of the strategies and they homeschool their kids in two languages so they post a lot of tips and advice and even resources that they've made for their children or new books that they've bought. I've watched other um, language learners on YouTube and they've shared a wealth of knowledge since um, my month long challenge and now I've just been soaking up all of their information trying to learn as much as I can. Um, and try to be a better language learner and a better language teacher to my family. Those were some of the hardest things and things that I had, I wish I had considered before I did the challenge and started them, started researching and learning more about it sooner. Here are some of the things that I did like and enjoy about the challenge that I did. I will say for the first time in a long time, I really felt like I was getting somewhere with learning Navajo. I made a tiny bit of progress that I've never been able to make in my life pretty much. For so many years since I was little, since I was in high school and even in college, um, and even in recent years, um, after I graduated from college, I still wanted to learn. I would go home and, you know, all of my relatives, my parents, they would speak to each other in Navajo, all of the community-wide events, a lot of it's tra still translated and talked about in Navajo. And so I was always the one who, who always needed a translation or asked my mom or my dad to translate it for me. And then I would get a Navajo language book here and there and try to go through it and get discouraged. There'd be a new announcement or a new flyer for a new Navajo language course and I'll, I would get excited and want to try it, but I never went through with it. But I never really sat down for more than a few days and really committed to trying to learn, to read, to write down, memorize, make flashcards, practice with other people, um, really have an in-depth conversation with my brother about sounds and sentence structures and translations for phrases that I use a lot as a mom. You can see that. I think it was the very first language vlog that I did on that first day. You can take a look at that and see what it was like when I got started. You know, obviously I'm not fluent after one month of trying to practice Navajo every day. I'm probably still at the same level that I was before I started, but still the progress that I made again was so gratifying for me as 
someone who's been wanting to learn for so long. And it was especially gratifying to be able to learn it with my son, to try to teach him and hold on to that little piece of hope that he might know some Navajo words as a toddler before he starts speaking full sentences, like he might know maybe two or three words in Navajo. Just holding on to that little glimmer of hope um, and it's still there and that really makes me happy as a mom. In addition, it really prompted me to go in depth learning about learning, about language learning. I mean, I think we all have a general idea, you know, you learn a language, you get textbooks, flashcards, you practice, you speak with someone to really get a understanding of the alphabet and sounds and sentence structures. And I've always been so focused in on Navajo, Navajo alphabet, structure, language, history, culture, language revitalization efforts, popular speakers on social media or teachers, the airplane. I really went outside Navajo languages and looked at all language learning and tried to learn more about being a bilingual teacher, being a parent and trying to raise your kids around in, in two languages with two parents that aren't fluent in the language, um, who don't live near the res, who live in the city. And I did learn a good chunk from other, like I said, podcasts, blogs, videos, teachers and parents on Instagram. And seeing all the work that they did really inspired me to continue with the Navajo language challenge. And even though I did it for one month and then kind of slacked off, and especially in the last month, I haven't really put any more effort into practicing. There was that period of time where it really inspired me seeing all of the cool work that they were doing and all the cool resources that they had available inspired me to make my own um, because they don't exist currently. I made my own Navajo font, um, I made my own Navajo language worksheets, and I have a ton more that I have in drafts but I haven't finished yet. Um, there's some Navajo language introductory videos that I've been wanting to make for so long but I just don't haven't had the time. I have like this long note, this notebook with a long list of ideas and products and resources and even ebooks that I want to make and I just get so many ideas and inspired by all of these other people who are being so successful in learning languages and passing it on to their family, to their kids. If they can do it, I can do it, right? If they can do it, Navajo moms can do it too. I think for anyone wanting to learn Navajo or any other indigenous language that isn't widely popular or doesn't have a ton of language resources like Spanish or Italian or German, is that it's critical to have and develop just an appreciation for language in general and understand the language learning process like just with anything else learning a new hobby learning how to drive learning how to cook learning how to garden it takes research it takes time it's nothing that can be done overnight and the process is different for everybody what worked for one person or what worked for me isn't gonna work for everybody and it's hard Le trying to learn Navajo is hard and I've seen online more not with me, but with others, um, thankfully it hasn't happened to me too much, um, is that everyone criticizes how others speak their accent or the resources that they're using or not using. Growing up, I didn't have an appreciation for the Navajo language, you know, grow, I was growing up around it and in it. I wanted to learn, but every time I tried as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult, I was made fun of, I was criticized, I was looked down upon, you know, there, even in school there was kind of like drifts between the people who were more cultural or who spoke Navajo and those who didn't. I'm an adult now, I'm a mom, and my outlook on my role, my position in, within my own search, figuring out who I am and what I want to pass down to my son, what I want to teach him. It's really evolved in the past few years. It's really neat to, again, have have this newfound appreciation for languages, for culture, for diversity within language learning environments. And as I mentioned, um, since I did that month-long challenge, I haven't 
been able to sit down as frequently as I did then to practice Navajo. And it's not to say that I'm completely ignoring it. Um, there will be a lot of resources that other people will, sh will share with me because they now know through my videos and Instagram that I'm trying to learn Navajo and make resources, uh, make products around the Navajo language. They'll still pop up in my feeds and I'll still watch um, some Navajo language videos from some Navajo teachers and other Navajo vloggers. But in terms of getting out my books and resources and sitting down and trying to speak um, with someone, trying to speak it with, my, with and around my son, reading it, writing it, um, I haven't done that in a few weeks, <laughs> at least the, the past month I haven't. So I kind of took a break from it and trying to do a refresh right now with it. I don't know what, what I'm going to do next with Navajo language learning. Um, I do want to do some more vlogs about it, whether that's taking you through the process of the products that I'm creating or the ideas that I have. And maybe there's someone I could, on here who's watching that I could collaborate with. But life is too short and it's very humbling to me to dedicate time to learning about languages and trying to learn more Navajo. I think this next year will really be interesting as my son really develops his speech and forming longer sentences and start to have more conversations with him. It'll be really crazy to see how much Navajo I can incorporate. I do want to make a blog post with a list of all of the resources that I've really enjoyed around this topic, all of the podcasts I listen to, the people I follow on Instagram, and even the videos that I've learned a lot from. Subscribe to my channel to stay updated on uploads that I do. I am on Facebook, I am on Instagram. I'm more active on Instagram, but you can follow me on either. Rather than doing a daily or monthly challenge. I think I want to try to do a weekly challenge where maybe I, I don't know, sit down once a week and try to practice that way. I know that's not the best practice schedule, but right now with our family schedule, that's a, a comfortable starting spot that isn't too overwhelming. And as I mentioned, maybe I could team up with somebody online um, to find a unique way to practice speaking. And if you've been one of the individuals who has cheered me on throughout my language learning process, either in person or online, thank you guys. Um, support is some support in learning the language is something that I haven't felt or seen. Like I said, I've always been criticized or made fun of, and it's it has been scary to share on Instagram or YouTube my speaking. Ability. I've been scared of what others might say or people who might criticize me. At least I'm trying. I really am trying. I still have hope that one day I'll be able to carry a conversation mostly in Navajo with some of my relatives, with some friends back home. Maybe do a speech or a video all in Navajo. And you know, for some people that would be a really easy thing to do. They could knock, knock it out of the park with, on first attempt. There's so many of us who aren't fluent, who are struggling to learn, who have tried it for so long and have been told we can't do it. I'm cheering for all of you guys who, one, <laughs> are still watching this video, and two, who are trying to learn really small indigenous language, whether that's Navajo, Cherokee, Apache, or other indigenous languages. Or maybe you're a teacher trying to teach these languages and you're just struggling to get your students to pick it up quicker or at the pace that you would like. I love having these conversations. If you have a question or comment, like this video. Keep a conversation going in the comment section. Check out my other language learning videos. I hope it's not too long again until I create and share another language video. I have some different type of videos planned for this next month. I might have a special guest on with. As you can see, I'm passionate about a ton of stuff, being a stay-at-home mom. Um, there's just some things that I've been wanting to try and share for so long, but just because of work, of school, I've never been able to, and the fact that now I am really have the chance to explore those interests that I've had, um, it's exciting, and there's just so much I want to do and cover and say and talk about and share. So in addition to my language videos and mom stories and vlogs and everything, claim.
Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys want to buy me a coffee, I have a coffee link in the description box below. It was a nice change of pace to be outside. It was either outside or this boring blank <laughs> white wall behind me. I need to get something up here or change um, something around in this workspace. But yeah, on all school, thank you so much for watching. Happy language learning. Keep studying, keep practicing, keep trying. Bye.